Hello, my name is Vanessa and welcome to Ortho Refresh. This video reviews how to place a sugar tongue splint. Sugar tongue splints are indicated for displaced distal radius fractures, can be used in conjunction with a closed reduction for a displaced distal radius fracture, and also for both bone forearm fractures. Sugar tongue splints immobilize the wrist from flexion and extension, and also from supination and pronation. Enjoy. A ready-made splint, scissors, 2-inch padding, tape, and 3-inch elastic bandage. Tear off some pieces of tape so they are within reach at the end of the splint. Then open the elastic bandage. Some packages have a red dotted line in the middle. Twist to open the plastic. It's much easier to take off. I recommend taking those sharp clips and throwing them in the garbage. They tend to hurt people. To position the patient, we will often have the patient lying supine. The fingers are pointed toward the ceiling. If this is used in conjunction with a closed reduction, the finger traps are often holding the fingers. Begin with the padding around the wrist, with the padding coming directly off the roll. Then angle up to the first web space and tearing from the bottom. Make your edge at the distal palmar crease so that the MCP joints are visible and the fingers will be free. Now overlap the padding in the palm going one more time around, making sure there are no wrinkles and begin working proximally overlapping by 50%. Make sure there's no tension in the padding that we're just laying the padding down. Continue wrapping down the forearm you may need to get another roll of the two inch padding. Once you get to the antecubital fossa, you'll want to pause. At this point, I like to use one hand to stay in the antecubital fossa and the other hand will go back and forth from one epicondyle to the other in accordion-like fashion. This creates really good padding about the medial and lateral epicondyles and the olecranon. With your last time around, use the final piece to hold that in place. Grab another roll of padding and continue wrapping proximally past the elbow. If you have three inch wide padding, this would be ideal as it covers more area to go around and around at the triceps where we need a lot of padding so that the splint doesn't rub. Tear off a piece of padding and fold lengthwise, wrapping around the edge of the padding at the distal palmar crease. This creates a cuff where the splint may rub in the palm. Tear off another small piece of padding, fold lengthwise, and wrap this around the thumb, much like a breast cancer ribbon, overlapping below the thumb. Now to measure the splint. We will measure from the palm, just inside the padding, at the distal palmar crease, around the elbow to the dorsal hand. We wanna make sure the splint supports past the wrist, both volarly and dorsally. Very important to pull the edges of the padding over the fiberglass at both ends before you get it wet. Get the splint wet, use room temperature to cold water, which will help it set up fast, wring out as much water as possible. Place the splint in a towel. Fold the towel over the splint and wring out as much water as possible. I call this the burrito trick. Now that we have the splint wet, we will apply it to the patient's arm. If you don't have the fingers in finger traps, you will want someone to assist you by holding the arm. I've started the elastic bandage about the triceps and wrapping around in a figure eight pattern. Notice how I'm cupping the splint around the elbow, molding it so that it fits well and is not a hard pointy area. Doing a figure eight with the elastic bandage. Then we will need to get another elastic bandage. Sometimes I start with a three inch bandage around the arm and elbow and then move to a two inch bandage for the forearm using a piece of tape to secure. Continue to wrap distally, overlapping by 50%. 
we're moving this patient around quite a bit, but somebody with a fracture would not tolerate that, so you would want to use a lot of caution. Making sure that splint stays right where we want it, working up, overlapping by 50%, and having about 50% tension in the elastic bandage. As I go up into the palm, I will make sure to fold or cut to go through that first web space and then finish wrapping around the palm. So there we've used two elastic bandages for this sugar tongue splint. So I have added tape around the palm and thumb to keep all the edges of the elastic bandage in place. There are a couple things to remember with this splint. First, it's not the prettiest looking splint. It is supposed to immobilize the forearm from rotation, from flexion and extension at the wrist and elbow. And second, he can move the fingers. This splint does not include the fingers, which is important to keep the fingers from getting stiff. While the splint is setting up, this is a good time to remind the patient of two tips and three rules. The first tip is put a cold pack in the armpit. This can really help with pain. The second tip is to keep the hand elevated, usually on a couple pillows. Here are the three rules important for every splint that you apply, spelling them out for the patient and asking them to recite them back to you. All right, thanks for watching. I hope that video was helpful for you. If you are interested in seeing more, please hit subscribe. Ortho Refresh wants to be a tool in your tool belt as you care for patients. If you have any questions, please leave those below. We will get back to you as soon as we can. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up Ortho Refresh is on Instagram and Facebook. Please check us out there. We want to have an interactive conversation. We want to know what do you need to hear about? What do you want to be refreshed on? Ortho Refresh aims to provide continuing orthopedic education at your fingertips. Thanks for watching.